It's only entertainment. Welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, Capital Markets Analyst and host of your Cannabis Business Podcast. I went to MJ BizCon, eighth year. I went out there to check out the automation equipment as well as consumer gadgets, find out what's new, neat, niche. All about pre-rolls this year with automation and equipment that we'll get to if you want to jump forward. There's some chapters below you can skip to that. We're going to talk about the market for this next couple of minutes and set the scene for why this automation equipment is there, being that North America is the largest market for pre-rolls, accounting for 40% of the global market share. Uh, in 2022, Europe is the second largest, 25%, and then Asia at 15%. According to Marijuana Ventures, some of the hottest pre-roll trends for 2024 shows that pre-rolls are going to be number one add-on for dispensaries around the country because they're convenient. They also mentioned that infused pre-rolls and multi-packs or mixed strains are going to boost sales. And pre-rolls are about to overtake flour as the number one category in Canada. We expect to see pre-rolls surge. Additional trends, according to Canatech today, are premium filter tip options and then custom cones and custom packaging. People are suckers for marketing, so market opportunities in general are going to be branding and differentiation in marketing. Medical applications, if you can get away with that, adding CBG or CBC and trying to get away with how that's going to be therapeutic or, or help you. One gram is super popular here, but product differentiation is important. So dog walkers are small core gram, third gram, really popular especially since people aren't sharing as much sustainability is important people want opportunities for brands that promote eco-friendly products dupe tubes create a lot of garbage so find something like 420 wholesale pack that offers a recyclable dupe tube um, not the stuff that claims to be biodegradable because it's really not it'd take like a million years um, so try to find somebody who's legit and what about the market opportunity in my opinion consistency. Where's that blue dream at? Uh, where's, you know, you keep changing everything and then you have nothing. So I'm getting really frustrated by it. I think the market opportunity is have consistency. Live rosin has been really popular on the vape side. You might see a lot more pre-rolls using that as well as traditional hash. Some of these infusion options uh, are trying to differentiate themselves as well as kind of creating this maybe high-end uh, brand awareness. And they can do that through the, the tips, making that feel uh, like it's a more valuable product. Reviewing pre-roll machines has been kind of an annual thing. So what we have noticed is a couple of years ago, everyone started to get into the industry. And then now that's slowly starting to collapse in. Talked to somebody on the phone just the other day who said it was just too, too much of a hassle. And they're in the agricultural market and just decided... Um, the different strains and consistencies and everything was just too much and they they just got out. So instead, what we're seeing is some consolidation, but people are expanding the um, amount of machines that they're offering. So there's more models, but fewer brands. So we're going to dive into some of these machines. There's about 30, but we're going to do it in a different way uh, before we just kind of showed you what was out there. I see the market kind of forming in the categories. So I've narrowed all this down into basically four categories. There's the commercial use. These are the big machines, fully automated, large scale, designed for you know, wholesale channels for business to business. There's also small business. These are semi-automated machines for medium scale and also designed for wholesale. And then small business is the third category. These are assisted automation, need more humans involved in that. It's for small scale, which the majority of these folks really are small scale. These machines are, are really big. Uh, in the end, when we don't have um, regulation to stop us from going from state to state, these bigger machines will totally um, dominate. In the meantime, uh, I feel like the smaller machines are getting squeezed out to create our fourth segment, which is the individual consumer. That's manual operation with automated support, small scale for retail or direct to consumer. And so things like what you're used to, the Futurola knockbox, for example, that is going to be something that's designed for the consumer and consumer Right now, they're still pretending like that's something that uh, businesses are, 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 are needing. Now, they do use them, but everyone would agree that it makes for a terrible pre-roll to the point where I've said publicly, I will not buy a pre-roll again because they're so bad. $5,600 for the knockbox. We'll get into, I guess we'll start with that because that's really kind of what started it all. 
If you haven't seen it, basically how it works is you just fill these voids with material and then you shake it until you're ready to sell it. Uh, but again, the problem is, is it's not really designed to compact the material to give you uh, a decent draw. So a lot of people buy this, they'll spend more money than they should. Let's see how much is it? Um, I've got $5,600 for 50 a minute. Uh, you can do maybe 10 cycles an hour, so you might be able to get a thousand. Um, it's going to be based on volume. M maybe you can have multiple sizes and they don't really have anything else. Um, so it it's a it's a gadget, not really a gimmick, uh, but not really a solution either. But before we get too ahead of ourselves, let's take a look at some of the commercial applications, uh, starting with the Blackbird. So I like this unit because I'm a fan of the cylindrical joints rather than the pre-rolls. I've said before that the draw is better. That's why you see cigar and cigarette manufacturers doing it. The Roll Pros, uh, it's a good machine out there. None of them are perfect. So you're going to have to uh, adjust the individual strains that you have um, for that machine. Machines like Consistency uh, and Cannabis just doesn't offer that. So this is a, a good machine if you like cylindrical joints. Uh, this is um, a really good option. And it's one of the only machines that offers that cylindrical joint. Price take is 240000 Does about 17 a minute. You might be able to get uh, around 750 out of there. Accuracy is 0.01 grams. It does have a check waste system, offers multiple sizes. It doesn't twist the tops or fold it because it's open, just like a cigarette. No need for a tamper because it's that Lieberman overrolling style. No built-in grinder. The machine allows for you to combine your isolate or distillate uh, into the material and then roll it. Some notes on here that the moisture contents around 10% cost of goods sold is around $3 a piece. Next machine up on the list is the Wanna Roll from Paxium. I went down to Las Vegas early in 2023 to take a look at their machine. Got to see their, their whole factory. They've got machines that will package anything you have as well. So not just uh, pre-roll manufacturing, but end-to-end. Um, -end. So that's kind of nice uh, about this company is um, they're certified where others are not. Huge, huge warehouse, a lot going on down there. They want 300000 for that machine, roll 67 a minute, around 4000 an hour and 0.01% accuracy. They do have a checkway system with multiple sizes. They twist the tops. Uh, there is that tamper. No built-in grinder, uh, no infused options that I saw. And um, they do have packaging. Like I said, they're one of the, the very few companies that have a ton of options for that. Next up is the Holy Roller, and they're selling it through Green Bros. They don't really know what they're going to do because generally Green Bros manufactures their own. The Holy Roller is the only thing that they're distributing for someone else. So the, they don't have the price down. They don't really know what they're going to do with it. But I did talk to somebody who had made a purchase, and they spent 450000 on that. Rolls 50 a minute, around 3000 an hour with an accuracy of 1%. It does have a check way, allows for multiple sizes. It twists the tops, has a tamper. Fanciest machine out there award goes to Corber. They've got a Nano H for 300 grand. It's a cylindrical. Um, this is exactly like the machine that I was going to build in 2015. Uh, but uh, if you're willing to deal with somebody who doesn't really understand cannabis, you can roll 5,000 a minute, 300,000 an hour with a 2% accuracy. It does have a check waste system, uh, but nothing else. And it takes five months to build. A, a lot of these are, are build to own, so this is not like fast food. The other thing you should, I'm going to reiterate, even though I've, I've kind of said, none of these machines are perfect. And the service is tough. Think about customer service. People come and go all the time. Some people, have you ever called anybody for technical help? Ooh, you know what I'm talking about. Some people know and some have no idea. Some of these services are free. We'll get to that with Accelerant. They only lease it, which is why they have really, really good service. Um, so when you do decide you might want to weigh service a lot. I was looking at some of their products. They have a, a blunt machine. Um, this is something that uh, very similar with the, the bobbin system there with that that paper, the wheel of paper, spinning out these blunts, cutting it in half. It's similar to the uh, Roll Pros, uh, Blackbird Roll Pros. Um, so blunts, yeah, I would, I've would. i been saying this for a long time. Blunts are going to be out there mass produced. The cylindrical uh, is, is a much better experience. Too long of a crutch. I still don't understand why they're doing that. 
But this German company does have a lot. They have uh, entry level machines, the tube filling machine. This is 80 cylindrical uh, cigarette style per minute. Then there's 150 pre rolls per minute. There's also cylindrical. All of these are look like a cigarette. And that nano H is 5,000 per minute. I may have gotten the pricing wrong because it doesn't seem right that a $300,000 machine would spit out 5,000 a minute, but then it's twice as or more than twice as much to spit out 150 a minute. Um, I emailed them. I didn't get any clarification, but uh, I'll have to check on that. So I ran into the group out of Montreal, Canada, the Prosapac that makes the pre-roller. They have four different uh, machines out there. Um, all of them, well, not all of them. So I think the one of them is is cone and cylindrical um, that are both. They've got this new centrifuge, which is one of the very few that's under $100,000. I think that's going to be a huge, huge market for really kind of small um, small yield, small output, and under hundred grand. Um, some of these manufacturers have gotten out of that price range, and I think they had their their spot. So we'll take a look at some of the pre-roll machines uh, from pre-roller that we saw uh, on the floor of of uh, MJ BizCon. Got uh, some of their machines out there. One of the more interesting things about pre-roller is they have an infused option. Like it will stick a rod down the middle and then put in your distillate. And so that's interesting because it's all within the same housing system. And it's um, from what I saw, it, it didn't look like you had to remove it by hand and insert into another machine by hand. They do have those. So with the Hephaestus, which we'll get into, they're working with another partner called uh, sorting robotics, but you have, it's more manual, which is great for like a smaller operation. Uh, but if, if you're a middle or, or large operation, this is probably the, uh, outfit that you would prefer over a different, different machines, different components. The centrifuge is something that you put the cones in and then gravity spins them around and that packs them. Uh, it's more hands-on, but the price point is there. So for what, 70 grand or something like that, um, 75,000, you can get that centrifuge and then another 30 or something, 35,000, then you can get um, the centrifuge with infusion. Um, outside of that, the the small pre-roller, it's 150 grand, rolls 85 a minute, 5,000 an hour, uh, 0.01 gram accuracy. It folds the tops as a tamper, um, and offers that infused option. Also, one of the rare companies that offers packaging, so they offer complete full automated solutions for bags, tubes, boxes, and jars. Accelerant is next on our list. We didn't see them at MJ BizCon in Vegas this last year, but um, they are leasing their model, one of the few. Hephaestus tried to, I don't know what happened, and they're now selling them again. Um, not at 400000 though. I was wrong. It's 230000 so my bad. Um, but back to Accelerant, they're leasing theirs for thir around 10 to 13 cents based on your volume. So I just kind of put the high end there until you kind of hit that sweet spot, bring those uh, price per units down. They roll cones 20 to 50 a minute, depending on the machine. It's going to roll at least 1500 an hour. It folds the tops. I think it has the, the crown um, with a tamper. Does have infused options. So there's a key and injection available. It also has the option to do cylindrical joints, but not at the same time. So you have to switch everything out. So this is fairly recognizable or similar in the size and, and look as other machines. So you really have to just kind of get into the weeds for yourself to see um, what some of the differences are. Next up was a group that was rolling with dope automation at the show called CME. Kind of came out of nowhere, I think last year. And uh, very similar to the the Korbers, the the, the German uh, manufacturer, in terms of of their looks and everything else. So they offer um, the Auto Cone Light through also through Dope Automation uh, and the Auto Cone. So if you want something smaller, uh, which most people only need something that's going to produce like fifty a minute, if that. Uh, and then there's the auto cone. If, if you're a bigger manufacturer and have a lot more market share in your state, you can go for some of these bigger machines. Otherwise, they're going to be offline a lot of the times unless you're white labeling from other people. But this company goes big. So you've got your pre-roll packaging machine as well as cylindrical cigarette style 
packaging machine does 180 packs. So if you have 20 or 50 or 80 joints, it'll do 180 packs per minute, which is insane. I don't think anybody needs that. But again, these are all designed for tobacco companies. Um, and then they have this auto twist pre-roll finishing. When you're dealing with people that that have this neat equipment, you really want to make sure that they know the material. Because when I take a look at this equipment and I see that I have to hand put in a dozen pre-rolls and then a machine twists them, how is that saving me any time? This is the dumbest thing I have seen in a long time. And I'm not surprised because when I spoke to them, they told me that they're going to have a machine for a million dollars that spits out joints, uh, cylindrical joints. And then now, now I talked to another guy and he says, oh, we're not going to do that. And I'm like, who are you? And I look, and he's a CEO. And I say to him, look, your, your whole staff is saying one thing and now you're saying another. So you have to get your information right. Otherwise, you don't really look like you know what you're doing. So for a, a company who's going to come to the show and not know what the pricing is at a million dollars or is it for lease? I don't know, it's important to know before you get to the show. And then you're going to seriously put this thing out that just like you, you're telling me you have no clue. You think people are going to spend money on that? You have no idea the industry is broke. You don't know that the industry doesn't need that. And I don't know, man, this is caveat M tour to me. This looks really, really cool. This looks neat, but I'm, I'm not convinced that they know the cannabis industry at all. So this next group is for small businesses that only need semi-automation. They're going to be a medium scale, not looking for full automation. Maybe they can't afford it. Maybe they just don't need that mass production. So they're still on that wholesale level that are manufacturing products to be sold at, at the uh, dispensary or retail shop, uh, but that don't need such a high yield or a, a high manufacturing uh, product uh, and or have you know, financial resource constraints. Next up is the Ultra Pack at 200,000. Their uh, pre roll for cones 30 a minute, 1800 an hour with a 4% accuracy. No check way, um, but it could twist and fold the tops. Does have a tamper. I didn't see them at the show in MJ BizCon, but this looks like um, very similar to the Festus, which we will get to kind of the grandfather of, of all of the machines that are rotary style. Um, I, again, I haven't seen this in person for a while. I think I saw this in Canada in January 2020 at the Lyft Expo. I might be wrong. It might have been Portland earlier that year, but I'm pretty sure I've seen this in person at least once. So the Ephestus is out of Israel. They're one of the first manufacturers of this machine in, in 2015. I didn't hear about them until I think 2018, uh, but they definitely changed the industry. So they inspired a lot of people, as most people just copycat and and stole their idea what they've done is sort of working with natal over at sorting robotics and he's working with them to do uh, an interesting machine that will dip your blunt or pre-roll uh, and, and get sprayed by a distillate and then move over to then be in a whirlwind of keef and then he's got another uh, machine that will infuse it straight in like the, like the rod, I believe. So uh, together with Hephaestus and Sorting Robotics, um, Sorting Robotics was easily the most um, interesting, new, innovative thing out there. The rest of the machines, they were just improving what they already have, uh, which is great. Um, but in terms of innovation, Sorting Robotics killed it at the show. Uh, really kind of inspired a lot of people. And so I anticipate their um, machines to to have a lot of copycats next year. So the Ephestus is 230,000, rolls 33 a minute or 2,000 an hour, has an accuracy of 0.01 grams, doesn't have a checkway system, but has multiple sizes and folds the tops. So the pre-roll max from Canimation, 300,000, rolls 24 a minute for around 1,400 an hour. 0.02% accuracy. It does twist and fold the tops, does have a tamper. So I did speak with them at MJ BizCon in 2022. They didn't have the machine out. I'm not sure it's um, available as of 2023, but I'm pretty sure it will be early 2024. So you want to check on that, but it looks um, like it's a jacked up version of this rotary style that we see out there. So uh, familiar to some 
it looks like they're trying to throw some AI into there in the field of robotics. So they've got artificial intelligence capable of learning and adapting and interact through the software. So that might be a learning and adjusting, changing. You have to check with them and see on how they're incorporating artificial intelligence. So here's a small business category for assisted automation that doesn't really need all of the extra automation. Maybe they don't have the money. Maybe they don't have any problem hiring people and they've got uh, all the staff in the world, but they just look for something that's small scale wholesale. This is perfect for, if you've seen those roll your own, you probably haven't because they haven't been around for a while, but used to be able to go into a store, put your tobacco in a machine and then sit there and then they would charge you to roll your own in in a store like a a subway or a handy mart you'd literally go in there sit down on a chair and then this machine would roll your own cigarettes so i see something like that i see it being a situation where this category is for bud tenders in a medical situation unless rules change on the regulated scene where a bud tender can sit there with when they have downtime and use these machines to uh, use the house flower or whatever and generate uh, some or produce some some pre-rolls scenarios like that where it's going to be small scale uh, is, is perfect for this this category that I'm putting out. So we've mentioned this German company that didn't really they were trying to tell me that grinding it pulverizing it to make these teeny little Virginia Slim style cigarettes is OK and that the draw is going to be OK. And I'm asking this guy like you're telling me you think the draw on this pulverized cannabis is going to be the same as a, a larger grind in a, in a more wider. And he's like, yeah. And I'm, I'm like, what are you talking? He's trying to tell me as if there's not a bunch of documents already out there showing us that there's a difference. But for the sake of the category, this type of machine that needs more hands-on will fit that more kind of assisted automation category. Next up is sorting robotics. I mentioned that they're working with the Hephaestus. This is definitely semi-automation, a lot of hands-on, but uh, nonetheless, very cool idea. So for those that are looking for more of a tabletop unit for infusions, you can hand put your pre-rolls in here. I don't know how many slots are in there. It looks like maybe 16 or so. And then this machine will put a little rod in there and then infuse your pre-rolls. Again, it's, it's, um, it's laborious, it's hands-on, but this is an option for those small businesses where that fits their needs. They've got another desktop vaporage cartridge filling machine and an arm that'll pick up your pre-roll and put it somewhere else. Um, so it kind of has this whole line, something like this would be perfect for that small business owner that just wants a tabletop unit. Doesn't come cheap, 125 or 250,000 does both joints and uh, pre-rolls, does around 13 to 16 a minute to give you anywhere from 780 to 960, depending on what you're trying to do. But if you're looking for a cheaper option, STM has a tabletop unit for 20,000, does 225 a minute or 900 an hour or excuse me, around 1800 an hour. I don't believe that they have a check weight, so it's going to be based on volume. They have a smaller unit called the Mini that does 143 a minute. I wasn't able to find these guys on the floor. Uh, the Futurola booth was hiding them, unfortunately, so they're kind of hidden. Uh, but the thing I like about this is the vibration stages will kind of remove some of the steeds and stems that come up and you just wipe them off as opposed to just something that's constantly shaking like a lot of these tabletops that I'm, I'm not going to review because there's plenty of them. I want to cover something that's uh, different, uh, that has some kind of differentiation. And so these this is more affordable for a lot of these people, much, much better than Futurola, not as expensive as some of these other ones, but it's, in my opinion, for a small business. You don't need all of the automation. You have labor there and you don't have any problems hiring people. Then this is perfect for you uh, if you've got enough space to kind of put these smaller units somewhere rather than one big unit. Um, so it all, all depends on, on your outfit and what you're looking for. Next up is the 101 from Paxium. It's a one person setup. And they also have the 101 Plus. So that's for uh, semi-automation too, if you want to spend a little bit more. The 101 here is $80,000, great price point. Uh, it makes about eight a minute or 500 an hour. They have um, a waste system in there, multiple sizes. It's got a tamper. Um, it does not twist or um, or create the crowns. So you're gonna have to do that separately, but it does have a lot of packaging options. 
Like I said, $80,000 is a great price point. If you want the fully automated version, that's going to be another $100,000, $185,000 um, small unit. But they again, they have a lot of options uh, on the back end for packaging and whatnot. So uh, definitely a manufacturer that you want to take a look at, Paxium down in uh, Las Vegas. Uh, a lot of options for you there, including uh, the Vision. Don't have a lot of information on this, but you can always get a hold of them. It essentially is a, a camera system that has a, also a rejection system. So you, if you don't want to have somebody on there to be fully automated, to be able to look at everything, this is sort of your eye in the sky uh, system here with a Vision 360. So it's going to take a look at what's going down the pipeline. Anything that's wrong with it is going to kick it out into this uh, removable, lockable bin uh, as a reject. So want to check out uh, the Vision as well. There are other machines from Paxim you might want to check out. Uh, unlike the pre-roller from Prosapac, they don't have anything that's cylindrical, but this is a manufacturer that you definitely want to take a look at their full inventory. So there's this unit I, I've been watching and I saw at MJ BizCon this year called Apex, and they're small and it's perfect for a small business. It's it's 36 inches deep, it's a couple feet tall, it's, it's easy to operate and all of that. And, and it's a really interesting unit. And I really like this one. I thought it was $85,000. They must have done something over the last year or two and then made some improvements or whatever. Uh, unfortunately, it's now $225,000, which really puts it out of the price range for a lot of people. It's It rolls 20 a minute, $1,200 an hour, uh, and has a folded top to give you that crown look. But I feel like they've priced themselves out at, at that Uh Although it would be perfect um, for, you know, one of those roll your own situations. Um, I just don't, um, I don't, I think there's a lot of other options. I'm not sure why somebody would pick that unless they had space constraints. It just looks small and kind of hard to get to and clean. And again, I'm not sure why somebody would pay the same amount uh, for something small when, you could get a bigger one. So I, I don't know um, why they chose to raise the price on that, but there you go. All right, this last category is for the individual consumer uh, and it's gonna be a manual operation, small scale, direct to consumer. So I've already talked to you, I've already showed you the Futurola knockbox. And so we'll jump right into uh, the King Cone that is gonna be, I think right now it'd be perfect for the medical markets. Again, when dispensaries or have downtime, uh, you just have your bud tender use this machine. So this is a $1,700 machine. I think you put the, the cannabis in there and it's also kind of a, a it's very similar to Futurola. So you just fill the, your product up just like the knock box. You turn it on and it shakes just like the knock box. You'll need to twist it uh, just like the knock box. So this is a very um, affordable version of the knock box out there from custom cones. I see that probably being a $250 unit uh, in another five years and targeted solely to the individuals or some you know, dispensary or really, really small farm. Um, I don't see anybody buying Futurola either, except individuals that'll also be probably 250 bucks. And then finally, uh, for the individual consumer, we're seeing um, maybe one of the first you know, gadgets I've seen in, in a while outside of the vape market. There's been a lot of handheld vape uh, innovation, not a lot of flower innovation. Uh, and so this is interesting. Uh, we did um, a little interview. They sent me this. I tried it out. You put the bud in there, grinds it up. So it's a mill and fill for pre-rolls. They will be doing cylindrical joints eventually for $149. Uh, not a bad little um, deal, especially when you think about the price of a grinder, a grinder's 80 bucks. So for the price of two grinders, you get this little gadget, um, kind of fun. Although I am noticing that I'm going to have to clean it, um, because it, it does stop after a while. If you put in too much sticky stuff, uh, you do need to clean it. <laughs> so to recap, there is a lot of automation. It's definitely here, but the individuals are consolidating. I would anticipate that to continue uh, what I've been hearing is that individuals are getting out because it's too difficult. They don't have, uh, the service isn't there and it's not necessarily the individual service person's fault. It's a really difficult product to work with. And I think that's going to weed these individuals out. Some of these manufacturers will not be here. I mentioned a couple of years ago that I thought it was just going to continue. And I was like, I'm not going to cover the sector anymore. It's getting crazy. 
but last couple of years that has really done a 180 and they're all closing down because it's it's too hard for that research and development, that R and D process of really perfecting this. I don't think it's going to come from the manufacturer. I think it's going to come from processors who use the machines who perfect it, and then they're going to pass that knowledge not onto the manufacturer. They're going to hold on to that, and they're going to make sure that they produce a perfect pre roll or joint for their clients. And that's really where I see this going. Is there's going to be big automation, middle guys. And then retail. Eventually, the smaller things are going to get squeezed out unless the price is, is perfect. But I, I think a lot of these manufacturers are going to get squeezed out anyways. So in the end, um, especially with Schedule 3, that's going to be a, a Trojan horse for Big Pharma to come in and wipe all of these players out. So I think those people who have the production licenses and know what they're doing have an opportunity to get bought and or use as a subsidiary for when the big players come in. And so a lot of these guys aren't doing that and they're going to be out of business. A lot of these people are going to be out of business. And I said that three years ago, you have first mover advantages. I don't see them utilizing it. When I said, what's new, what are you doing? And they tell me that they have an M1 chip. Great. Um, but what else are you doing? And I don't, I just don't see the movement um, in order to continue to have that market share because they don't think it's going to happen. Uh, they don't think that there's going to be this competition. Uh, and so uh, they're going to get blindsided when it happens. I'll leave a link for the playlist in the comments. There's a few other videos in this automation playlist where I go into some of these machines in more detail, as well as previous years where I've just covered the same machines over and over. Maybe I did a more detailed version. You might want to check that out. Or you can hit me up directly if you want to hire me, ask me for my opinion on how to get you the best automated pre-roll system out there. But with that, I think we're gonna have to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid, this is The Talking Hedge. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, or don't, and I'm out. Don't forget to smash that like button on your way out and check out these other videos that we've got.